Hey everyone, my name is Thomas Little, and I just want to do a few plugs before we get started on our video. You can reach me on Twitter at Thomas Little DBA. You can reach me on Facebook, and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channels. A lot of great, lot of great videos coming out, uh, and alike. So let's go ahead and get started on our video. If you had a chance to view the 10 minute session video on SQL Server design, uh, you now have an understanding of how SQL Server queries are executed. Um, it's time to now look at the resources to support the installation of SQL Server on your new system. So your CPU requirements or when you're doing your requirements gathering is largely going to depend on the types of queries that you are running on your system. Okay. And so you're going to need uh, all the processing power uh, that is possible, but you need to base it upon what your load is going to be like. Uh, but there are some requirements with SQL Server 2016 that you definitely need to be aware of. Keep in mind that the 32-bit version of SQL Server uh, is no longer supported. It's not even part of the media. You cannot install it on a SQL Server uh, 32 or on a Windows 32-bit system. You can't do it. Um, there's also a number of different processor types that you can or, or that are um, supported in our system and there's also some minimum requirements on the speed of the processor so you need at least a 1.4 gigahertz processor in order to install and run SQL Server the recommended uh, gigahertz is actually 2.0 two, uh, 2 gigahertz and I've actually seen uh, even more than that just to run some of the most demanding workloads out there now SQL Server loves memory and all the memory that you have given it's going to consume all of it and if you don't give it enough memory you could see some things that don't quite make sense for example you know not giving enough memory you could see high degrees of CPU usage and IO uh, usage and alike so SQL Server loves memory I think where it kind of comes down to so again the more memory you give it the more uh, it's going to use it uh, but there are some minimum requirements around memory so in the uh, express version a minimum amount of memory is 512 megs and the recommended is one gig just to run some of the small uh, applications that you would put on an express edition now most of all the other editions uh, they kind of vary the standard and express it's all going to depend uh, on your workload but at a minimum it's definitely one gig uh, and then all the others are going to depend on the edition that you run and what OS lies underneath of that uh, some can only go up to certain amounts and we'll talk a little bit about that uh, in additions and alike but you need to make sure that you're keeping an eye on the underlying operating system and what memory requirements and limitations that it has and also the addition of SQL Server that you're installing. However, keep these numbers in mind because these are going to be minimum and recommended numbers but you're really going to want to get true numbers based upon your workload. storage is critical to SQL Server and that is where your data lies so making sure you have the best storage system and IOPS in your for your SQL Server is critical there are some considerations that you need to make there are some determinations that or some ways or some tool sets that can help you make those determinations so uh, for considerations you need to make the decision on whether or not you're going to go dedicated or SAN Based. That's going to play a big part in understanding um, your layout of your system. In the sand based in the sand based configuration, I would definitely recommend talking to your storage engineer to find out what is your underlying uh, storage system that the databases are going to exist on. Um, 
and what type of performance? What are the HBA configurations that you need to use? On a dedicated system, you need to understand, work with your system administrators on understanding your SCSI requirements and alike, and what, how fast your disks are going to be and how big they're going to be. You have to understand RAID levels on both sides. So there's a lot of different considerations when you make the determination of either dedicated or SAN storage. There's also two two tools that can help you uh, get the benchmarks of your SQL Server. So there's SQL IO SIM and there's SQL IO. Those tools can also help you do that too. Also keep in mind too that SQL Server requires a minimum of six gigs hard drive space for the installation. So depending on where you put the installation, there's already a requirement uh, for storage space. Now, that's on top of anything that you put on the environment, any user databases and how big you think they're going to get and alike. When you determine your storage system, file placements are going to be absolutely critical. Where are your primary data files going to exist? Where are your secondary data files going to exist? Where are the transaction logs in TempDB? These are three things that you definitely need to consider because there are requirements for that. You do not want your TempDB being on the same um, same system or same disk as your transaction logs. Uh, you want to keep TempDB separate. You want your transaction logs to be separate and primary and secondary files separate. So you want these three, three things separate from each other. Um, and some of these configurations you can actually do during the SQL Server setup. So when you go through SQL Server, you can determine where your log files are going to be, where your secondary and primary data files are going to be. And you can also determine where tempdb is now. tempdb used to be something you had to configure after the fact. And now within SQL Server 2016, you can do it right in the setup. And you can determine the number of files that are part of your tempdb and alike. So you have a number of considerations to think about file placement when you're talking with your system administrator about direct storage or your SAN administrator about your SAN based storage. There are some other requirements around installing SQL Server. You need to be mindful of the operating system requirements. Are you going to install 2016? Are you going to install 2012 or 2012 or 2? These are all Windows operating systems that support SQL Server 2016. You also need to be mindful of the addition of your Windows operating system. That's crucial too. In a cluster environment, you can only expand your cluster so many nodes depending on the addition of the OS and the addition of SQL Server. So you need to work with your system admin on that. Um, .NET Framework 4.6 and PowerShell 2.0 and 3.0 are absolutely required to do the installation of SQL Server. Some of those are already brought as part of the installation, so you have to be careful with that too. Windows Installer 4.6, and just a reminder that the x86 processor is no longer supported. So working with your sysadmins, you need to make sure you're not installing a 32-bit operating system. Last but not least, we have to worry about service accounts. So SQL Server has to run as an account uh, or set of accounts. Uh, so there's considerations to make even before that. You definitely want it to run as a service account which has the least permissions to your server. Uh, that's just a very secure, very best practice type of way. Try to use domain counts whenever possible. If your machine is on a domain, try to separate out your, your SQL Server engine account to your SQL Server agent account and give them the minimum amount of permission. You don't want permissions. You don't want your the engine account running your um, IIS services. Right? You want to try to give them all separate accounts. And again, just try to give them the minimal amount of permissions. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure you uh, visit us on YouTube. Make sure that you're subscribing to my channel. Um, and you can visit on Facebook and you can uh, also hit us up on Twitter. So thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it.